Well, RBS 90 is an all-weather system, and it is a quantum leap on the existing RBS 70 system, which has been around for some time. So RBS 90 is a much more effective system, and it's got its own radar, and it's a very, very capable system. The anti-armor systems on this videotape are only a selection from all the systems demonstrated on this eventful day. But they clearly explain Beaufort's domination of the anti-armor and anti-tank fields. These are the weapon systems. The AT-4 light, preloaded, disposable anti-armor weapon. The AT-12T preloaded anti-armor weapon with tandem warhead. The Carl Gustav, an internationally acclaimed multi-purpose weapon, here in its new M3 version. The 3A Heat T armor defeating round for upgrading the 106 recoilless rifle M40. The Bill ATGW, the first anti-tank missile system to employ the top attack principle. the FFV-028 anti-tank mine, and one of the mines demonstrated on this day. The day began with a number of the guests being flown by helicopter to the bonus test range to verify that the targets were in accordance with military standards. The bonus range was designed for testing the bonus anti-tank shell, but it's also used for many other purposes. APC standing over there. Standard armor plate. In L3 Harvard. Harvard, one meter. Round. You can see it much closer. The, uh, the space between the armor plates. Come on, let's go. Immediately after the visitor's inspection, the demo began. The commander-in-chief of the Swedish Armed Forces witnessed the presentation of Beaufort's armor-piercing ammunition. And I hope that you will enjoy the demonstration here. To demonstrate the armor-defeating capacity of Beaufort's AP rounds for assault rifles, an AK-5 with five 5.56mm AP rounds was fired at a target comprising a 10mm thick armor plate and two steel witness plates spaced 50 millimeters apart. Range, 100 meters. First, standard 5.56 millimeter rounds. Commence fire. Now, 5.56 millimeter armor piercing rounds. The result? The standard ammunition used in the test hardly dented the armor plate, while the 5.56 mm AP rounds made full penetrations. An M58 machine gun then fired five rounds of 7.62 mm AP ammunition. The target, an APC. Full penetration with internal damage. Now to the AT-4 systems. The AT-4 heat high explosive anti-tank weapon. The AT-4 LMAW light multi-purpose assault weapon. The AT-4 CS weapon for firing from confined spaces. The live firings prove the high level capability of the AT-4s. First was an AT-4 heat 
fired at a reinforced APC with an armor protection of 38 millimeters HB 300 at a firing range of 70 meters. Note how the overpressure forces the rear hatch open, even though the hatch had been fully secured. At the replay, the explosively formed penetrator can be seen striking the target. The result? Full penetration and extensive fragment damage to the dummies. Now the AT-4 LMAW. The soldier can instantly select impact action or delayed action. The shell penetrates about one meter into the bunker before detonating. Result, destruction of the bunker. The AT-4CS showing its unique capability, firing from inside a room. The 120 millimeter AT-12T, man-portable, preloaded backblast weapon that can defeat the armor of any MBT and from any angle. To prove its armor-defeating capability, the AT-12T was fired at a heavy single target with an explosive reactive armor module. The target consisted of two armor plates, each 150 millimeters thick, and two witness plates, one 25 millimeters thick and one 10 millimeters thick. The target was inclined 68 degrees. The ERA module used in the live firings belongs to a new class of explosive reactive modules. They're considered the best there are and are very difficult to neutralize. The AT-12T firing resulted in full penetration of the target, including its 40 millimeter thick baffle. This weapon system is the best of its kind in the world. One of the guests described it as man-portable artillery. It's the 84 millimeter Carl Gustav multi-purpose weapon. Together with its specially developed family of ammunition, it's the weapon for all combat situations. These were the ammunition types demonstrated. The Heat 551, which knocks out 90% of armored combat vehicles at ranges up to 700 meters. The Heat 751, with its hollow charge tandem warhead, which increases penetration. The HEDP 502 dual purpose round, optimized for urban warfare. The HE 441B, with a warhead carrying 800 tungsten pellets and a time fuse that can be set for impact detonation or airburst. The illuminating round 545, which enables units to provide their own battlefield illumination. The smoke 469B, for blinding, screening, or spotting targets. The target for the Carl Gustav M3, with a heat 751, was a NATO heavy triple with an ERA module. This is an extremely difficult target. It consists of one armor plate 10 millimeters thick, then another plate 25 millimeters thick, then the main armor plate 80 millimeters thick, and finally five witness plates, each 10 millimeters thick. The armor plates are spaced 330 millimeters apart. The angle of inclination is 45 degrees. The Carl Gustav was fired from a weapon mount.
The result? Penetration as far as the third witness plate. Now the Carl Gustav firing an HEDP warhead at a brick wall. The shell blasts through the wall and detonates inside. For the next firing, two Carl Gustav squads were landed by helicopter on a nearby rise and fired smoke 469B rounds for screening. <laughs> 